Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Coaster News. And as always, we've got some amazing news from different theme parks, rides and attractions and events all over the world. So, let's get straight into the news today. Our top story for tonight, Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger has officially opened at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. And obviously, this is a uh, an, an outstanding milestone for B&M and Six Flags as well. So I'm pretty sure this is the first time that Six Flags have actually worked with BNM in a very long time, over a decade I think. I could be wrong, but it's been a very long time since Six Flags have worked with BNM, and it's also a, uh, an achievement for BNM themselves as well because it's the first dive coaster in the world to feature a beyond vertical drop. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger is a brand new roller coaster that opened at Six Flags Fiesta Texas on the 30th of July. Um, this year, it is a B&M dive coaster. Except the one, that, the thing that makes it this one unique above all of us is this is the world's first dive coaster to feature a beyond vertical drop. Because most other dive coasters in the world have a ninety degree drop, whereas this brand new one features a ninety five degree drop, making it a beyond vertical dive coaster. So this actually begs the question: Could we see more beyond vertical dive coasters pop up? in other places in the world. Um, I really do hope so, because they should really build more of those B&M uh, Beyond Vertical Dive Coasters, because it seems like a great innovation. Obviously, the ride opens um, pretty recently. I literally just said this. It literally opened on Saturday last week, and I've heard it's been received really well for their park. Obviously, they've, they've basically, I've heard it's Six Flags' as testing grounds um, for Texas, because so they've got some really innovative coasters like Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, which was the world's first RMC Raptor Coaster. Obviously, Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, which was the world's first Beyond Vertical Dive Coaster. Um, they've got, um, I think it's Superman the Ride, or I could be, no, Superman the Escape, I think it's called. Please correct me if I'm wrong, which is like, I think it was one of the world's first flawless coasters. So that was incredible. And yeah, it, it looks like one of the best Six Flags parks out there. And this new attraction is not, is going to add to that lineup. Obviously, like I said, it has got a beyond vertical drop. Most other dive coasters in the world have a ninety degree drop. I mean, that's weird to think, right? The first BNM dive coaster was Oblivion at Alton Towers, which has has a eight seven point five degree drop. I think it has. Um, obviously, that's the only dive coaster in the UK. And that was the first one in the world that opened back in nineteen ninety eight. Whereas all across the world, so these other parks in like America and whatnot that are getting beyond vertical dive coasters that were 200 feet tall and have inversions. That is insane. I, I really do think B&M should build another dive coaster in the UK at some point. Um, obviously, I know that next coaster won't be a B&M dive coaster, but we'll get on to that in a minute. Um, but obviously, it looks absolutely incredible, this ride. Obviously, it's not one, of the, not one of the larger dive coasters in the world. It's more one of the smaller ones. I mean, even, I mean it's not small, but it's kind of... Small compared to the likes of Val Raver and Yukon Striker and Shikra at Bush Gardens. Um, obviously, this one is, is only like 150 foot tall. Um, but I think what I like about these other smaller BM dive coasters, um, bear in mind I've only been on one dive coaster, Oblivion, um, is that they ha like probably have more exciting layout than some of the other ones. Because obviously, you, you see these massive 200 foot dive coasters like Cedar Point and Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. And obviously, their enormous rides have, have huge drops, but because the entire ride is huge, that means that it actually looks kind of slow. Even though the fastest one is Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland, which goes 80 miles an hour, because the, tr the ride's track takes up so much space, each element is huge, it's, it feels slow. Whereas with smaller ones like these, the speed that it's going has excellent pacing, and it packs more of a punch than these bigger ones. So that's what I like about it. Plus, this new one, Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, like, I can't stress this enough, it has a beyond vertical drop. That that must feel so weird going on a B&M dive coaster with a beyond vertical drop. That is honestly insane. I mean, obviously, we're used to companies like Gerslauer and more recently Intamin building beyond vertical drops with that with Gerslauer's Eurofighter coasters and Intamin are building coasters with beyond vertical drops. Now with like Pantheon at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg and a new... Blitz Coaster opening up Park Warner Madrid next year, which looks absolutely insane, by the way. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm confused why not a lot of people are talking about that one. But absolutely insane, and I hope BNM build more Beyond Vertical Dive Coasters in the future. 
In other news today, um, Chessington World of Adventures Wilderfest has officially started. And obviously, if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically Chessington Wilderfest is a event that was introduced last year at Chessington World of Adventures. It's basically like some kind of musical summer event where they have loads of different bands dotted around the park themed to different animals. It's kind of similar to like um, what the more recent Alton Towers Festival of Thrills, except they have bands themed to their coasters. Obviously, Chessington did a similar concept literally last year before Festival of Thrills at Alton Towers, except their bands are themed to various different types of animals. Obviously, we went last year and the entertainment um, on the park, it's like musical performances from bands like on the stage. I think they only have like on the main stage, although I think this year they may have expanded it by adding a few other stages around the park. So that's really cool what they've done. Um, and I've heard the event has gone down quite well. Obviously, it's not like the best event at Wilderfest. It, not Wilderfest. It's not the best event at Chessington because obviously out of um, Wilderfest or Halloween and the new Mardi Gras, I think I'd go for either Halloween or Mardi Gras because obviously it is a good event, but it's like not as good as Halloween, obviously. But that has like multiple different attractions in it other, other than like Mardi Gras and Wilderfest. But I'm, I'm talking about Wilderfest in this one. Obviously it's a brilliant event. It actually started on the 1st of August, so this Monday. And I've heard it's like expanded a bit more than it did last year. Obviously that's what, I think that's what usually happens with events. Oh, so their first year it's a big, big thing because it's a big brand new event. But then the next year it happens, it expands into more much larger event that's more present in the park. It, literally, it happened in 2020 when Oktoberfest at Alton Towers was introduced. That was a huge event, obviously, but mainly because it was the first year. But the next year, in 2021, it, it was obviously a much bigger event with more, more, more presence in the park and more stuff there. Um, obviously, in Mardi Gras, Alton Towers last year, that was also a big event, but in 2022 it expanded with, obviously, a lot more crews and a lot more live performances. And I think the same has happened with Wilderfest this year. And it looks absolutely incredible what they've done. Obviously, they've taken a note from Alton Towers and put stages dotted around the park. Because I'm pretty sure last year, they just had the, like, performances in, like, maybe the main stage um, and the mini stage near um, Room on the Broom, Magical Journey or whatever it's called. And there was like another little one in Wild Asia. Other than that, it wasn't really much apart from the main stage. But I think this year they've expanded it to like multiple big stages or, or medium sized stages around the park. And it looks brilliant. I actually kind of wait to experience it this year because obviously last year um, we went, but we really didn't get to experience a lot of the entertainment. It was the same as like Fort Park Park vibes when that happens. Um, so obviously it went in August last year. And we went for Chessington Wildervest and Park Vibes at Fort Park. Um, obviously, we we went and we enjoyed the day, but we didn't get to experience a lot of the entertainment. Um, I think it's mainly because there weren't really that much entertainment around the park. Obviously, we went in October, uh, the next um, couple of months later. And so that was during the Halloween season with like Halloween and Friday. So that was packed with entertainment because it was all around the park. So I'm hoping Chessington have done that for Wildervest this year made it more present in the actual park itself. That would be brilliant. Obviously, um, it was a good event obviously, last year, but this year I think it's gotten a lot better than it did before, because it's a great event at Chessington. It's obviously a relatively new event, because I noticed that Chessington have actually, like all the other Merlin theme parks, have expanded their lineup. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only Merlin theme park that hasn't really started adding loads and loads of events each year is Legoland. They still have the same sort of events they have done for many years now. They've still got Brick or Treat, The Fireworks Spectacular, and Christmas at Legoland, but that's about it. It's not like all oh, the other million theme parks, which are getting new events every year with Alton Towers Oktoberfest, Alton Towers Mardi Gras, Alton Towers Festival of Thrills, Fort Park um, Oktoberfest, Fort Park Park Vibes, Carnival, Mardi Gras. Chessington, Mardi Gras, Wilderfest, the list goes on and it's probably going to expand even more next year because they're bringing in new events every single year. It's absolutely brilliant and it adds more variety to the theme parks and just, it just makes a great addition than other than just like the rides or if it's Chessington as do. But if it's uh, obviously a great addition what for events that Merlin are doing and I'm hoping Wilderfest will be bigger and better this year. 
Also in the news today, and this is a bit of sad news that's emerged recently, um, Hershey, uh, Hershey Park have officially closed Wildcat forever. Um, obviously this is quite sad news for a lot of enthusiasts, especially ones in the US. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically Wildcat is a GCI wooden roller coaster. It was actually the first roller coaster ever built by Great Coasters International, or GCI. Um, it is located at Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, it opened back in like the 80s or 90s, I think, something like that. I don't really know that much about the ride, but I only really heard about it recently when it's closing. But basically, it's been operating for a while now, 25 years, I think. That's like quite a long time. Um, obviously, over the years when it operated, it was considered to be like not a very good ride. Obviously, it was GCI's first roller coaster. It was probably a lot better when it opened, but it started to get criticisms for being quite a rough roller coaster. But obviously, um, Hershey Park announced recently that on the 31st of July 2022, Hershey it, Wildcat will be closing forever. And obviously, they, had, they gave final rides on that day. And even though people, a lot of enthusiasts out there are quite sad that the ride's gone, because even though it's not like the best of coasters, especially from like GCI, um, it is a classic wooden roller coaster. And even though it's gone, a lot of people are actually speculating about the future of this ride. Could it be, a, a lot of people are thinking it could be RMC, because this, this sort of thing just happens whenever a wooden coaster closes. They are, a lot of people think it could potentially get RMC. Um, I'm pretty sure RMC have I guess kind of confirms that it's getting refurbished into an iBox wooden roller coaster, well not a wooden coaster, but an iBox hybrid coaster. And if it does, the ride's layout would be absolutely spectacular. It's obviously one of those wooden coasters that um, a lot of people say if it got RMC, it would be an absolutely stellar layout. Like, obviously, Gwazi, back when that op was operate operating at Busch Gardens Tampa, even though that was a racing wooden coaster, or a or a dueling one, I think, um, and obviously that rides. It was it was um, um got a lot of good reviews when it first opened, but uh, over the course of its life, it got rougher and rougher, and people didn't like it as much. RMC got hired to refurbish it, and it and it became what a lot of people consider to be one of the best roller coasters in the world. So I'm hoping that will happen with Wildcat at Hershey Park, and it's not just Iron Gwazi, There's also um, Mean Streak at Cedar Point that got turned into Steel Vengeance in two thousand and eighteen. Um, um, obviously there was that one in Japan. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was called White Hurricane or something. That got turned into an RMC Hokuge. So I'm hoping this will happen with Wildcat at Hershey Park. And finally, in the news today, um, new track has been spotted at B and M's factory that could be. The new roller coaster track for Project Amazon at Chesterton World of Adventures. And obviously this is great news from the park and BM in general. I'm not sure if this has been confirmed to before Project Amazon at Chessington, but it's looking likely because we're getting to that kind of time in the construction phase for Project Amazon where the where track could start popping up. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically Project Amazon is a brand new well, actually, it's a brand new themed land being planned to be built at Chessington, uh, World of Adventures, opening next year. It Basically, the land consists of three um, attractions, um, two children's flat rides, which are currently unknown, and the return of B&M to the UK. Basically, it's going to be a B&M launch shuttle wing coaster with an inversion. I know that is quite a mouthful. Um, but obviously, it's been announced it was announced last year um so it's been in the works for over a year now as part of the public consultations the plans got approved i think at like either the start of this year or end of last year obviously groundwork has been going on for a long time some vertical construction has started but not on the actual ride itself more of the theming a giant statue has actually emerged on the site which looks vaguely similar to the jaguar statue from the film jumanji which actually is is part of one of the multiple evidence thing. It uh, basically is evidence that the ride could potentially be themed to the the film Jumanji. Um, because obviously there's that that jag giant Jaguar statue, which is looks a lot like the one from the first film, and also on the plan application, there's like a path area that looks like the the board game Jumanji, the original board game. 
So I'm hoping it will be, but until then we've actually got all the other other construction to go through, including the two children flat rides, the actual roller coaster itself and all the theming. And I'm thinking there's new track actually been fabricated at B&M's factory in the USA. Even though B&M is based in Switzerland, their factory where they fabricate the roller coaster track is actually in America. And obviously in the picture you can see that it's actually green track which is absolutely incredible to see that we're getting a colourful roller coaster in Britain. Because obviously there are quite a few roller coasters in this country that are kind of like got very dark colour schemes. Um, the, with the, probably the theme park with the most colourful roller coasters is probably Flamingo Land with Mumbo Jumbo and Kamali and well, Velocity once was, but not really that much anymore. Um, but either way, this is most likely to be the track for Project Amazon at Chessington World of Adventures. And if it is, I cannot wait to one day see the track at the park. This track will probably be in the park when we, when I go to Chessington later this month. So that is it for this week's episode of Coast News. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please make sure to like, subscribe, and come out with likes in the next video. Bye!